Okay, this is the let's code portion of my NTSC intro video. If you don't already know a fair bit about NTSC or you haven't already watched my previous video, click here right now and go, I recommend watching the first part about how NTSC works. I have a neat little presentation that explains exactly what it is we're doing. So go watch that first. But if you have, let's get started. I'm using an analog TV, and it's not just because I'm retro, it's because these things are really, really useful when you're trying to figure out what exactly is wrong with your NTSC video signal. This kind of TV is willing to spit out whatever you shove in on the little wire there. It's not going to say, oh, no video. It's not going to say, oh, I don't know what you're trying to do. It's just going to spit those pixels to the screen, which is really useful in debugging. So I highly recommend you use a video uh, receiver that's not going to just lay them out and show a blue screen and say no video signal at the slightest problem. All right, so here we are. I now have my source code for the NTSC thing. This is available in my Git repository. Uh, this one is just a basic NTSC black and white example. This particular example uses the SPI bus to get a very high density text display on the screen. I'm um, just going to say make and uh, see what happens. You can actually see that it's kind of all messed up when I'm making because it's using the SPI bus to program the device as well as output the NTSC video. So that's kind of one of the neat things there. You know it's working if you see all the sparkles. Um, I have the source code open here. Uh, main is actually really simple. All that happens is at the end of every video uh, frame it calls uh, video tick and, or rather, sorry, this is the end of every line, it calls video tick. At the end of line 9, I say, okay, we have a new frame. And uh, what this does is it has a frame buffer right here. And uh, this frame buffer just contains 48 by 24 characters. And I initialize it with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the whole ASCII char set, all that other jazz. And it contains um, this code here for if we have a new frame, then we want to uh, say, uh, actually I don't even know what that code does, let me just delete it, I'm assuming it's not important. Uh, then we can say sprintf to the frame buffer itself, percent %d, this is c for percent print a number, which is tf, which is this frame, to, and we increment it when we're done, uh, directly to the frame buffer. So that's why you can see right here the value is just counting up at around 60 hertz. Actually, I would hope it's exactly 60 hertz. So you can get that to stop for a while. Uh, so that's what you're seeing right there. And uh, just in order to make the processor a little happier, keep things a little more stable, we are sleeping the CPU. So this project is split into two different things. One is this NTSC file, which I've made modifications to for color and for black and white, but it's largely the same. It's, it's really the same sort of engine. It's an engine that uses both the uh, timer 1 to control the timings on the specific lines, as well as uh, timer, uh, I guess it really is just timer 1. Uh, you can use timer 2 if you want to, to handle chroma, but that's not what we're doing here right now. It just needs timer 1, and it sets it up so that it calls this, this interrupt right here, this comp A interrupt, at the beginning of every single line. And the idea is that's what we're doing right here. At the beginning, what we need to do is, beginning of line, send a sync pulse, and we need to do that for 4.7 microseconds. So what we're doing first is we are saying make sync. Now, we have 4.7 microseconds to do whatever the heck we need to. So we'll say if we're doing in the sync territory, which means C line, so if we have, if we're syncing uh, first line, second line, third line of sync, there's 20 sync lines, uh, then we'll go run this code. And uh, we can reconfigure it to either, uh, to, to change when the interrupt B happens. So this will say after 66 microseconds, or after 774, or sorry, ticks, not microseconds, uh, after 774 ticks, after 64 ticks, uh, this I guess it's, I think those are in units of 3.4 megahertz, or 3, no, 28, whatever it is, very high frequency ticks, and these, uh, don't really worry about these, these are all just part of how it syncs, um, again, that was from this awesome website here, there's this kind of complicated pattern of ones and zeros and all this stuff that you need to do to set up the H sync. So don't worry about that. This is all handled. Again, if it's interlacing, it does something different than if it's not. So we're not worrying about that either. 
But here's where it starts to get a little bit more interesting. Uh, if we're at the very last line, we do have to do some things to set it up for starting over. Uh, but other than that, we're done. So there's really not much we have to do on a standard video line. We just have to say, wake up and say, ah, okay, yes, everything's fine, we're in sync. So, that handles this. So we're here, and now we're here. Do -do 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 -do. And now, this interrupt here, timer comp B effect gets called. And so the first thing that we're going to want to do is, you know, make sure we're doing this at exactly the right time. It's this whole corrective timing thing here. We're not going to worry about it. If we are, blammo, make blank. So we want to set the blanking level here. If we were doing color, we would need to send the color burst, but we're not, so this doesn't even exist. So this little section right here, this blanking, takes 4.7 microseconds. So we make it blank, and then we say 4.7 microseconds later, then we can keep executing code. If we happen to be in one of the HSYNC areas right here, then we do have to go handle it in whatever way, but again, that's all part of how the NTSC code library thing works. But here's where we get to put our code. If we're actually on a video line, we can go call video line. Video line is defined here in video.c. So this code for video line sets up the SPI bus, it does a whole lot of other crazy things, um, stupid fast ASM, you know, all this jazz in order to display that text is absolutely packed, crammed tight as it can. You know what though? That's not the point of this. Let's not worry about that right now. Let's just try to get something that, you know, works. Let's just try to play around with this some. So, as you can see here, the first few things that happen are the, uh, the, the SPI bus is turned off and port B is set to output and we're waiting 0.5 seconds. So that means that we're going to be uh, just black for a little bit. And what we can do is we can jump straight to end. So down here we say we wait a little bit longer, we turn off it, we move back to blanking, and we can go call video tick. So right now let's just say go to end. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make again. And as you can see it's just black. This is just black, which is to be expected, considering right now either the signal is either sync tip, which happens before, or it's in blanking, which it is right here. So this is to be expected. Let's delay for a little bit. Let's say 10 microseconds. Then let's set port B3, which by the way, we can see right here, uh, MOSI is on port B3 and MISO is on port B4. So what we care about is MOSI for the uh, for the black to white transition. I'm going to say port B four equals under BV four. A uh, little side bit here: BV actually is a synonym for one. Then move over the number. So what that does, it'll set the bit number four. Actually, it should be bit number three of port B to be high. So that'll make it white. Uh, let's also wait 10 more microseconds and then turn it back to off. So or equals means bitwise or this to be 1. And then we can also bitwise and it to be 0. So what we should have if we make this is a little white bar in the middle of the screen. Okay, well, maybe not the middle of, but it's a white bar. So this is wonderful. We're waking up at the beginning of every single line, we're executing this code this code right here, waiting 10 microseconds, it's black. Then we're turning the line to bright white, waiting 10 more microseconds, and then turning it back to black. Okay, that's fun. Let's, uh, let's do some little project here. Let's try to display, I don't know, the letter A. So what we actually have in a kind of unusual format is this 8x8 font. So I'm going to go copy this pointer up here. And this, this font data is stored in kind of an unusual way. It's actually stored into uh, different lines from, from the, so the top line. Say we have uh, 8 by 8 it would be the top line of data is first, and then it has the, first top, the top line of data for every single character. So the top line of the 0 character, top line of the 1 character, top line of A, top line of B, top line of C. 
Then, later on in the, the, the buffer, it has the second line for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then, later on in the buffer, the third line. And it's a little bit confusing why you want to do it, but it does work out to be able to be accessing the data faster when we would do it that way. At any rate, in the meantime, what we're going to want to do is we're going to make eight lines, eight bars across the screen. That's going to kind of give us a hint as to how we can lay out our function. So, for i equals zero, i is less than eight, i plus plus. Okay, got that. Now, what we're doing is we're going to put this all into a loop. Actually, we're going to want to delay a little bit at first just to center things. And uh, we're going to want to shorten the length of time. Otherwise, let's make this. Ah, you can see that now everything is broken. And that's because we're taking way too long to draw a specific line. That's just not going to work. What we need to do is we need to shorten the length of time that our line is going to be there to draw. Let's try using two microseconds. Ah, okay, excellent. Now we actually have our bars across the screen. So, great. <laughs> we can have eight, these eight repeated bars. We're going to want to do something a little bit interesting. So we're going to want to say, um, let's try to draw these stripes in some sort of configurable pattern. Let's call it unsigned char uh, c equals 0x aa. So what that should be is a bit pattern that's actually 1010101. Oh, wait, nope, too many. Uh, no, 10. Oh, yes, that. And this bit pattern is uh, something I want to display. So I want to actually draw these as individual bars. It'll only be four bars, but it'll be a new way of drawing these four bars. I can say if c and 0x80. Uh, what that says is if the most significant bit in C is set, then execute this code. So if it's set, what I want to do is I want to draw a line there. Otherwise, I can say unset it. Okay, so it clears it. Let's delete the synonym since we don't need it any longer. And uh, let's wait four microseconds. And we have to do one more thing. So if we just ran this eight times, uh, let's just do that what we end up seeing is it's just all white. Even though we have a bit pattern here, it's not useful because it's just looking at the first bit over and over. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to shift C up a bit. So first it's going to look here, and then we're going to shift all of these over one, and now it'll look at the next bit down. So the way we do that is we'll say C, bit shift it up one. Okay, so now we should see these nice four bars, and we do. Okay, so now we can change what kind of uh, mask that we see. So if I say 0x8a, now all of a sudden it'll only be three bars because there's only three bits set. Or fa, that'll be ah, that'll be these four be all white, and then the lower ones be a. So now we have this nice configurable thing we could display, say, a specific line at a time. Let's fill in the, the, the rest here. So we know we're getting the top line of a given character here. And we know that we want to try to get out, say, a specific character from there. So you went 8t. Uh, let's say I want to get out the capital A. OK, cool. Now there's one concern. This is not actually a pointer to an unsigned char. It's actually all this is stored in program memory. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to say pgm read byte fc. And what this does is it actually tells the AVR, okay, go read this out of program memory and do what you need to do to go get that byte. This should be what we need in order to display A. Oh, this is not quite right. Ah, here's what's going on. So we have this, the font data, and we're looking at p line move over by 7. Problem is, we haven't set p line yet. Let's just set p line, ah, p line equals this line. Let's see what happens. OK, that might look like trash right now. And I certainly would not blame you for thinking it looks like trash. Uh, what I think is going on, though, is that we're compressing things way too much. Let's try to smooth this out some. So this line, let's shift that by 4. 
hmm, something is still not quite right here. Let's see if we can figure out what is going on. Not entirely sure what's going on here. Let's try to play with this a little bit. So we got this P line. Uh, we're now getting a specific line. How about this? Let's start somewhere else. Let's try to print out in binary which line we're on. Or which one of these virtual... Actually, yes, let's print out which line. Okay. Interesting. So now what we have is we have a pattern that says, so now this particular higher bit is set, which would mean that we're in above 128 line. So this is the most significant bit. This is the next down significant bit. Next down significant bit. All the way out. So now we know that yes, in fact, we can draw based on a specific line. This is, you know, good news. Now, let's try to figure out why we can't read this font 8x8 data. Let's, uh... Let's try just specifically reading just the first line. So let's keep doing the same thing in FC. Okay. That doesn't look like what the first line of the letter A should be. Maybe it's the address of that? Ah! That does look like the right thing. Okay, so it turns out we were resolving it and we were trying to get the value out as though that was a pointer. That was the wrong thing to do. Now, instead of just saying line zero, let's try to get P line again. I think it's P line carrot carrot seven. Yeah. Still not quite right. Let's try just reading just the line from this line. Ah, it's going in the wrong direction. Let's try it that direction. Okay, what we're actually getting here is all of the, the character information getting crammed up there. Let's try sliding this down some four bits. Ah, excellent. We see the letter A and some trash. So let's try to clean this up a bit by saying and 0x 0, 07. So that means that only the first three bits are permitted to be used. There we go. Now we have the letter A and the letter A. Let's uh let's repeat it again. For giggles. A A A A A A A. Hooray! So that's working. Now let's do something uh, a little bit different. Let's try to make it so that it's a little bit tighter so that we can see things a little bit clearer. Let's change this delay. Make it three. Ah, that A looks better already. Two. Okay, so now we have A repeated down the screen. Let's uh, let's make this dependent on which frame it is. So you can just use the variable frame here. Let's make. And now we're cycling through all the letters at breakneck speeds probably want to slow that down just a little bit. So we're going to go bitwise shift this another two bits. Keep in mind we're using these bitwise operators as multiplies and divides, not really anything special. That's interesting, I just noticed something. This looks not quite right. Let's go change this. Let's take a look at the letter R, something that matters the orientation of. Ah. In fact, our characters are backwards, so it means that we're looking at them from the wrong end. Instead of looking at the most significant bit first, we want to look at the least significant bit first and shift it the other way. Hooray! The R is the right direction. Okay, and let's just go back to watching frame. Actually, let's slow it down by just one unit. Okay, now we have our letters showing up on the screen, and uh, we're drawing them ourselves at the beginning of the line, and everything is hunky-dory. So now, 
Our code is executing at the beginning of the scan line, we're waiting a little while, and we're doing turning on the pixels on and off in some sort of interesting pattern, going to the end, and going to the next scan line. So anytime that you want to write anything where you can know on this particular scan line, I need to turn the light on and off and on and off and on and off to produce whatever it is I want to make, this can do that for you. Yep, it's kind of annoying. Okay, 